So welcome to the first annual Taco Tuesday Family Resource Night, January 2021. It's very exciting to say that. Um, my name is Diet Snyder and I am with the Washington State School for the Blind Outreach Program. I'm the Birth to Three uh, Director and Statewide Coordinator for Birth to Three Services. There's another person coming in. Um, and I want to introduce my partner in crime is uh, Krista Bolger. Aha. Uh -huh. Hi. I'm Krista Bolger. I am a parent of two boys who have a retinal degeneration. And they are 14 and 18, and they attend Washington State School for the Blind. Additionally, I am a teacher of the visually impaired and I work for the outreach department at uh, WSSB. So I'm so excited that Diet asked me to partner with her in this adventure and um, I look forward to chatting with you guys. Um, there's so much to learn, so much, so much out there for you. So um, it's it's about 6 13 and we only have an hour together so i really want to use our our time and it's so lovely um that all of you are sharing your children with us it's um we are lucky to be along on the journey with you um and so tonight for our very first taco tuesday um i wanted to bring in some uh agencies that you might no, or, um, and you might utilize right now, or other agencies that might be benefit to you in the future. So here we're talking about the, the, uh, the present and the future tonight. So um, first up is Stacy Gibbons, who is from the Northwest Association of Blind Athletes. And so she's going to tell us a little bit about what they do and how your children could possibly participate and be an athlete because they can. Hello, everybody. My name is Stacey. Thank you for the introduction and for sharing uh, all of your, your families with us today. Uh, super excited to always share our mission, especially with young families. Uh, because what's really cool about our organization is we are with you for a lifetime. Uh, so we start services. We've had babies in the pool with us as mommy and me classes, uh, all the way up to 90, 90 year old walking and hiking with us. Uh, so our mission is to provide life changing opportunities through sports and physical activity for people who are blind or visually impaired. And sometimes people get really stuck on the word athlete. And what we've kind of a way we've like learned to present that to people is if you have a body, you're an athlete. It was Bill Bowerman who was famous for um, starting Nike with Phil Knight uh, said that, and that's kind of something that's really stuck with us. Uh, and so we work with people of all ages, stages, and ability levels. Uh, and we do over 15 different sports. So really you come to us as you are, uh, and we work with you depending on what type of event. Uh, and how we can get you involved to have success for whatever your goals are or whatever your child's goals are uh, for that time. So since a lot of you, I kind of wrote down where you're from. Uh, we have six different programs. Oh, I'm going to start my alarm clock to make sure I only talk because I could talk to us, talk about this for hours. Uh, so we have six different programs. And I would say for most of you, I think uh, that we spoke were five and under. And so for our, our young ones, uh, we have different programs that kind of work better for our young, younger kids. Uh, our tandem bikes, even though we have bikes that go to very short, <laughs> uh, they don't always work well for certain ages. So for our youngest ones, a lot of times what we do is uh, swimming is a huge one that we push in the winter time, um, but then also just encouraging family participation. So whenever we do a type of event, um, so I'll give an example. So we do swimming uh, and we do it usually at the School for the Blind. It is a little bit of a different year, obviously. Um, but when we have swimming events, uh, it's at no cost and say you're interested, your family's interested in coming. Um, whether you're a swimmer or not a swimmer, we always have volunteers or staff willing to get in the pool to work with your child one-on-one. -on -one. 
And so you can come and say, hey, Stacy or whomever, whatever staff member and say, we'd really like to come uh, to this swimming event. Um, but maybe this time we just wanna check it out. We wanna see what you're all about. We wanna meet people. Um, so you're willing to do that at any of our events. Uh, you can always just say, you know, we have, we do the beeping Easter egg hunt at the School for the Blind. That's been a great way to get young families to, to know us. And maybe they're not quite ready to commit, but then they can just kind of get to know our staff, which is really awesome. Um, and then we've had families that come um, just to the beginning of like a hike or a tandem bike, just to see kind of the other kids there, the other families. And we really kind of operate like one big team or one big family. Uh, and we like to outreach to each other uh, to support one another in a bigger community. So you came to our swimming event because you registered. Uh, I think I said this, but none of our programs are any cost to our families. Uh, and so uh, you'd get changed, you could get your child changed. And then if you're working with a volunteer, uh, you'd come out of the, the locker room and we'll say, um, uh, I'm working with Stacy today. Um, so uh, your child would come over to me, we'd like talk a little bit um, or just interact. I would probably work with the parent to say, hey, what do you wanna work on today? Uh, is this their first time in the water? Really kind of getting that global perspective and then we would take them into the water for about two hours. We do ask parents to stay um, and just kind of watch, observe. You can ask any questions. Uh, and then again, if you also just wanna get in the water, especially when they're little, a lot of it's just feeling the sensation of being in water uh, and maybe blowing bubbles or splashing or just getting some movement in their limbs and arms and seeing how they, uh, how they interact with it. And we love bringing parents into the pool with. Um, with their kids because it's such a bonding experience. So even if your swimming skills aren't strong at a young age, that's not really what we're working on. We're just working on comfortability in the water. And so I talk about swimming because like I said, that's really big for young families and younger athletes because we can really um, have anyone in the water with us. Uh, we are in four states. So we're actually in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. And in all of those states, we do programs in different areas. So kind of, I would say right now we do programs in like the, not bigger cities, but like we do programs in Spokane. We have gone up to Bellingham, um, Tacoma, Portland, Vancouver, uh, Seattle, uh, Yakima. So we kind of make our way around the state throughout the year uh, and trying to provide different types of programming. As we keep growing our staff, we'll be able to be in those areas more often, uh, eventually having uh, multiple offices in the state of Washington, which is what we're working towards right now. Um, so when I was talking about swimming, that's kind of our sports outreach program. We do swimming, skiing and snowboarding, uh, track and field, goal ball, uh, tandem biking, paddle boarding, kayaking. So really anything you can think of. And I know a lot of families um, mentioned that your son or daughter has CVI. And so something we also do is we do support athletes in wheelchairs um, to a degree right now. We're actually expanding and looking into, as we kind of grow our programs, having um, like a wheelchair accessible bus, having specific events for students with CVI. Um, and really we're just trying to make sure that we're reaching our athletes uh, where they're at and best supporting families. So we are ever expanding that. We do um, welcome families to come to all of our events and we will, it's always kind of a narrative or a conversation of really sharing what we can do and how we can do this safely and successfully. Um, we really believe that sports and physical activity are a catalyst for a greater quality of life. So not only are we building community and social interaction and building self-esteem and confidence, we're also connecting families and parents um, uh, together to really just kind of take on life together because we're meant to be a community of people. We're meant to, to you know, help each other out, uh, raise each other up and then just live you know, in a world where being blind and visually impaired doesn't mean anything different uh, than you know, their peers at the same age. You just might do things a little bit differently, but really we can do that uh, doing sports and physical activity. Uh, often that's really left out uh, in schools. So we really push hard our other programs. I'm going, I know I'm getting close. Uh, <laughs> often we push hard our other programs, which is our sports adaptations program. Um, 
our whole staff is, I think we have five out of five out of six staff are teachers. So we all have backgrounds in teaching physical education or physical activity. And so a lot of our, the way we teach and the way we uh, present our programs is through that teaching background. So we also love to educate families and uh, physical education teachers in school districts um, by providing information of not how can our, you know, how can my child be excluded, but how can we be, how can they be included? It's about what they can do, not about what they can't do. And so on YouTube, we have a whole video resource library. We also have PE lessons or lessons for students that have CVI um, that really just encourage participation in physical activity and recreation. And you're welcome at any time to call us and say, hey, I just wanna work with my son and daughter or this, or do you have any ideas of how we could work with our PT on this? And we're always welcome for emails, phone calls, video chats, you name it to do that. Uh, and I'm just gonna end up, I'm gonna just touch on two. We do have Camp Spark. It's our camp that's a developmental sports camp. Uh, and that is a weekend or a week away from mom and dad uh, in a very safe community environment uh, where your son or daughter will be able to stay on a university campus or in a cabin with other students or with other kids their age, uh, participating in a multitude of different sports and physical activity. Uh, on the weekend camps, we cook our own food. So just a different experience of experiencing camp um, with uh, students who experience blindness or visual um, low vision uh, that they uh, sometimes similar or different. Uh, and that camp is going to be expanding to students with um, maybe more more needs that um, their independent daily living skills aren't uh, as of as close to their peers and we're actually starting that camp in June, which is really exciting. We haven't actually told anyone that yet, but it's happening which is super awesome. So it's for uh, people that might need, or students that might need a one-to-one -one, um, and maybe need more cues in the bathroom or different areas. Uh, and so that's really cool. The sky's the limit. And I think I'm up on my time. Uh, <laughs> there's so much, uh, feel free to call me or email me anytime. I'll, I'll put some links in the chat, but really we're here just to help you and your family get active. And like I said, we love connecting families and we really encourage siblings to come. Uh, we have grand, we, we have adults, we have grandparents that bring their grandkids with them so that they can see them doing things. It's all about what we can do. So uh, very positive community. And I know quite a few people on this call know us and work with us. Krista's, uh, both her kids have done things with us. So <laughs> uh, that's my spiel. Great, thanks, Stacy. Yeah, please make sure to put your uh, the website in the chat box. Yep. Um, so that uh, if parents want, to, if anybody wants to go and look at it more, especially some of those YouTube videos, because again, yeah. I think that physical activity, regardless what you feel uh, your child's abilities are, it, is important. I think that I, I love that. If you have a body, you're an athlete. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I did forget to mention we are doing virtual PE every Wednesday. <laughs> I did forget to mention that and it's all four states. So we have, you know, eight to 10 kids depending on which one uh, and we're doing virtual PE. So we, and we, everything we do is described and fully accessible. So uh, some people like to just join us to learn and we just started doing webinars too for continuing education credits. So great. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Stacey. So Thank cool. You. So cool. Well, let's move on from uh, uh, being an athlete to being a reader. So if you have eyes and if you have hands, you can be a reader. So Aaron, you're on. Oh, wait. Thank you. I'm sorry, Aaron, before you start, does anybody <laughs> have any questions for Stacy before we move on? And I did put my all my information in the chat. Uh, like I said, feel free to contact us anytime. The website, the YouTube channel, my email, and my phone number. So awesome. Can I just say one last thing? It's important just also to sign up for their newsletter. Stacy, I'm sure they can do that on the website because that's where I get all of my information about upcoming events 
it's not on social media. It just comes right to my inbox and things that I did not know were going to be happening. Um, you, you're never left out of the loop of when an event will happen near you. So yes. even if you don't anticipate doing it any time in the next year or two, um, as your child is growing older, you definitely want to be uh, in the loop with yes. NWABA. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And I actually have to go to another meeting, but thank you all for having me. Thank you for letting me be first. You guys all have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Bye. Janet. Hi. Uh, welcome. I enjoyed all the baby noises. Thank you for that treat. It was wonderful. I am Janet George from Department Services for the Blind. We call it DFB for short. Um, the DFB serves Washingtonians of all ages from zero all the way to the end of life. Our mission is inclusion, independence, and economic vitality. So our goal is to help people who are vision impaired, who are blind, and with or without additional disabilities to have independence to the best of their ability, to be included in their family and in their community, and to have economic quality. So we, have a huge umbrella and all sorts of services fall under this umbrella. Um, one minute here. I am going to turn off my voiceover because every time somebody chats or puts something in the chat, I hear all about it and it's making me distracted. Sorry about that. Now, okay. So we have a huge umbrella and under that umbrella is all sorts of services. And each service is geared towards the different age group. The first one is um, consultation services for the zero through eight year olds for the families and this could also include visits um, to the family's home just having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just talking about this and that i myself am totally blind so i've walked the road and i'm very open to answering questions about, well, what's it like having a vision impairment? I also have an additional disability of having trouble walking. So what's it like to be blind and not being able to walk as uh, comfortably as others? I am very open to questions. Being as how it's COVID, of course can't have any in person, but the next slide will have my contact information when we get there. And maybe one of my colleagues can put it in the chat for those who find that easier. I can um, also attend as a neutral advocate, IFSP meetings. And when you transition from the birth to three program, and go into the wild world of school, I am very much available to be with you as a mutual advocate on your individual education plan, IEP team. And our services continue for the nine to, to um, 21 year old in under what we call pre -ex, pre employment transition services. I always look to the tomorrow. What's going to be the tomorrow? Right now, we have Sweet Linnae 
and she is comfortably cuddled up with mommy, but tomorrow she's going to make a new change, a new transition. And so when we have our pre-ex, pre-employment transition services, this is where programming is developed to help our young kids nine to 21 start preparing for that after high school career exploration, um, post-secondary, after high school, into college exploration, work-based learning experiences, actually getting jobs and feeling what it's like to work and get paid and buy groceries and spend off all your money in one big sh um, We have uh, social activities and um, workshops where kids are learning how to cook or clean or financial literacy. It's a wide range of things to help our young people learn those skills necessary for life after high school. Then we have our um, main focus at the agency, everything we do, all services that we provide are geared towards helping people to become employed. If you are interested in getting a job, we're there for you. If you're not quite ready, we're there for you also, because we want you to feel included. We want you to feel that you can do what anybody else is doing. So we have our vocation rehabilitation program and that starts from about age 14 to end of life where you're working with a counselor, you're developing a plan for employment and the, this plan is step by step. When you're 14, you really don't kind of know what you want to be. So you do a lot of career exploration. And as you get into the older teens, you're actually doing internships. And as you go towards college, you and your counselor are planning on, well, what do I need? What kind of tools will I need? What kind of supports will I need as I go to college? or I look for a job. So your counselor would be working to help you with those things. DSB will provide equipment, assistive technology tools to participants who are um, in high school, senior year of high school and older, so they can be prepared for that after high school moment. All DSB services are free. There is no cost for any of our services to anyone. Okay, so let me see if I can tell my story in 20 seconds. I am totally blind and I grew up in Jamaica where services were very limited. When I graduated from high school, I won a scholarship and came here. Fortunately, circumstances occurred that I stayed here and became a citizen. I have two children. I got a lot of support from my local department services for the blind so that I could go to college to study, to become a teacher of the vision impaired. They pay for all my books all my computer services, I mean, all my computer equipment. And they were there to support me when people challenged me because um, they said I could not teach because I was blind. So that's what the Department of Services is for the blind is there for, to support you. Right now, when your child is 17 months old, all the way up to end of life, Please give me a call anytime. Thank you. 
Janet, I love listening to you and your calm voice and your advocacy and your your words of hope and encouragement are just awesome. And I love, I love, I just, I love you. And I love that being in meetings with you. I just want you to know, makes me happy. Thank, Thank you. you. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Janet? She really is a great parent advocate. So please give her a call if you need anything. She is on your side. All right. Sure. So Miss Erin, are you still frozen or are you unthawed? I hope I've thawed. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. Okay, we can good. hear you. Everybody, this is Erin from the Washington Talking Braille and Book Library. Um, my, my name is Erin Groth. I'm the Youth Services Librarian at the Washington Talking Book and Braille Library. Uh, we are located in Seattle, but we serve the entire state of Washington. And like Janet and Stacy said, we also serve patrons from age zero to over 100 years old. We have several patrons who still use our service into their 100s and uh, our readers every day because of our services. So we have large print braille, print braille and audiobooks, and we mail them out to our patrons no matter where they live in the state of Washington. And uh, it's free to ship back and forth. You can keep the books for basically as long as you want. Um, as long as you need to, them. We have tons and tons of children's books. Basically any picture book you can think of, we probably have the version that has the print and braille, Twin Vision, or we even have board books that have the braille overlay on them, which is really less about the child learning, you know, to read the braille than uh, understanding that when they hold a book, and they feel the page that the bumps on the page are our words. And when you as the parent are reading the story, uh, they can you can put their hand on the braille bumps on the page or point at the pictures or the letters if they have vision to see the print. Um, really just early literacy uh, foundations is what we love to do at Watabal. Um, and I, as I said, I'm the youth services librarian. We also do a multi-sensory story time. Um, it used to be in person. Um, we did it every week, uh, twice a week actually, in the library in Seattle. And then I also, um, because we serve the whole state, I will bring that story time with me anywhere someone asks me to. I've been down to Vancouver a few times to do um, Diet's Birth to Three, group. Um, there's a parent infant play group down there. Um, I've been to Yakima. I've been to Wenatchee. I've been up, down, left and right all over the place uh, with our story time. Uh, now it's virtual. So I'll put in the chat um, our, with our library YouTube page where we've been putting up weekly story times. And if you would like, we also have multi-story time kits which includes um, stuff like this. Janet, I'm holding up a dinosaur finger puppet. Uh, we are sending out um, totally free. Of course, still everything we do is free just like the other organizations. Um, but if you have a child age zero to five or who is developmentally in an early literacy stage and you would like a multi-sensory kit, we, uh, you will just send me your information and I can mail that out to you. It has egg shakers, uh, dancing scarves, bubbles, um, all kinds of stuff in there that you can use as you watch our multi-sensory story time videos and hopefully one day in person again. <laughs> um, for the older kids, we also do, uh, we do a lot of different programming. We have art shows, poetry contests, the summer reading program where we also mail out weekly uh, activity kits, everything in large print and braille. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of titles of books. Um, the audio books 
it, we have an app you can listen to if you don't want to use our player. Um, and if you download them on our app, uh, you can actually keep them forever. There is no due date, which is different from the regular public library. Um, let's see, I'm trying to fit it all in in my time. I know we, we're going pretty, uh, I don't want to go over. So <laughs> um, basically anything you can think of that has to do with reading or literacy, uh, we can do it for you. And again, we, we serve patrons all over the state of Washington. So if you've never even been to Seattle, don't worry, we can still serve you just as if we have a lot of patrons who've never been to the library in person, but uh, they've been our patrons for decades. So um, it's really just a great service. And uh, we, I work with TVIs all over the state to get kids books that they need to read in class or to get them books for leisure reading. Um, it's really, uh, I, I love being a librarian. I love working with kids. And uh, this is a really cool population to work with. It's very special because even though we're all spread out over the state, it feels like a smaller community family um, when, we, when we do stuff like this. And when I get to talk to people, to patrons on the phone or go to do outreach visits, it's great. I, Love seeing all the same faces and Janet and Dia and Stacy. I've met them a hundred times and I hope to see them a hundred times more because uh, this is a really great community to collaborate in. And uh, yeah, if you have, I'll put the, the website. Um, you do need to have, you need to fill out an application to be a patron, um, but it's really simple. They usually have you approved within 24 hours. And um, I'll also put the YouTube website if you want to check out those multi-sensory story time videos. Oh, and we have like escape rooms and all kinds of stuff for older kids too. So uh, if you ever think, you know, oh, I wanted to do an escape room, but I, I don't think that we can, we do accessible escape rooms for teens and tweens. So that was the big thing we were so excited about doing last year that got cut off, but... <laughs> They'll come back. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. Awesome. Thanks, Erin. Does anybody have any questions for Erin? And raise your hand if you're going to order one of her multi-sensory kits. Yeah. Awesome, Erin. That's so cool. OK, so I did put the uh, website in the chat box which is basically www.wtbbl.org. Yes, and I'll put my email in there too, um, which is where you can order the kits from. Awesome. And yes, her story times are awesome. They're so fun. So check, check them out. Um, great. Well, last but certainly not least is Katie Humes from the Washington Sensory Disability Services. And um, she's gonna talk about um, all of the services and specifically the Deaf Blind Project. Project, excuse me. I'm gonna share my screen because I have her PowerPoint. Hello everyone. I'm just putting my uh, email in the chat. Um, I'm Katie Humes. I'm from Washington Sensory Disability Services, otherwise known as WSDS, um, which is actually a collaboration of three different entities, uh, the Washington State School for the Blind, the Center for, thank you, Dia, that's good right there, the Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Youth, and the Washington Deaf Blind Project. Um, the slide that's up right now is our, those three different entities that shows um, the Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Youth, Washington Deaf Blind Project, Washington State School for the Blind. Um, I want to step back for a minute and then I'll talk more about our website because it's kind of a, a grounding place for, uh, to, to find stuff. Um, if you wanted to know, gee, I'm not sure if I contact yet about this or somebody else, um, you could request um, support through this. 
or you could share our website with uh, somebody working on one of your teams. Um, I just wanted to tell you in listening to all of these resources, I think resources are great and they can also be overwhelming. And I really want to take a step back and acknowledge what you're already doing in a global pandemic, working and being and playing with your child at home and coming to something like this. So what you're doing is enough. And this is something to know that's out there and we're here to support you. Um, Washington Sensory Disability Services uh, partners with educators, families around um, those three groups of kids. And I'm the director of the Deaf Blind Project, um, which includes kids who have complex medical needs uh, that include a vision and a hearing loss. And it's a really diverse group of kids. Um, we serve birth to 21. So I think differently than the other people who talked tonight, um, we're birth to three and school age, um, not adult life. Um, okay, the, back to the website. Um, on the left hand side of the website, there's a margin there. And there's two things I want to say about it. One is there's a big red circle that circles the button that says request support. Um, and that just takes you to a form. And if um, you wanted to say, uh, we wanted to find out how someone could come talk to the preschool team that our um, child's going to be going to, and we're not sure what our next steps are. You could request support there. Um, right above that red circle is a uh, button that says videos. And if you click on videos, there are some birth to three videos in there. Um, there are some, um, they're based on, like one of them's called security and discovery. Um, and they're, they're examples of activities and uh, things that parents are doing with their child, in some cases teachers, um, that kind of work towards orientation and mobility, work to how to move out into the world. So the security piece, how to be, know you're secure at home, you know, being held, and then how to um, discover out in the world. Wow, it's getting late. Um, you know, when, when Diet said this was talk, taco, taco Tuesday, I was thinking tacos, like where are the tacos? Okay, talk of Tuesday. Um, the other thing I want to let you know was, um, uh, what was the other thing? Um, you can reach out to us anytime. Um, there may be some of you already working with a consultant from the DeafBlind Project. Um, we use the word deafblind, but um, they, a lot of kids have a degree of residual vision and also use their hearing to some degree. Um, we can help with uh, ways of communicating. Um, and if you even ever have concerns about how your child is listening or hearing, um, that's something that we would be happy to um, you could reach out to me and I'd be happy to um, talk through some next steps about that. Um, all of us partner together and we work together to help um, hook you up to resources that you're looking for. So um, I have a lot of respect for what parents do and I'm even more so during this time. And I wanna thank you for coming and listening to all of us. And that is it. I'm going to hand the baton back to you, Diet. Mm, I'm going to put, um, I'll put my phone number in here too. Great. Thanks, Katie. So, so really, this was just a really small snapshot of everything that's available to you as, as families. And one of the reasons why we wanted to have this um, Taco Tuesday or Family Resource Night is 
is not just to bring you resources, but also maybe for you to, to meet one another and realize that there's other families out there dealing with some of the same struggles that you are and are celebrating some of the same joys that you are. And so this, we really want this time to be um, a time where we can just get together and maybe learn a little bit, but also connect with one another. Um, so I want to share with you that we have um, a, a planned February, so the second Tuesday in February, we're going to talk about um, parents as teachers and introducing you to what we call the expanded core curriculum, which some people consider them essential skills curriculum. So these are things, you know, uh, core is reading, math, science. Um, and everything kids learn in school. But expanded core or ex essential core curriculum is everything that our kids or your kids learn because of their um, blindness or low vision. So social skills, braille, orientation and mobility, communication, all of, all of these things, self-determination, um, uh, rec and leisure, all, there's nine different categories. And so we're gonna learn about all of those. And I'm willing to bet you guys are already doing these at home. And so we want to affirm parents and all of you grandparents out there that you are teachers too. And these are the things that you're gonna be doing. So that's what we're gonna talk about in February. And then in March, um, March is always a really great month to talk about literacy. So it's Dr. Seuss's birthday on March 2nd. So we're going to discuss um, literacy ideas and different, uh, you know, free Braille book clubs. And maybe Erin will come back and do a, a, a mini sensory learning lesson with us um, and talk about different types of, of, of Braille. And so we're going to just have a variety of different literacy conversations, um, uh, maybe how to adapt a book for a child with cortical visual impairment. Um, so those are some of the things that we're going to talk about in March. And then I would really love for you guys to email me about any, and I'll probably create a survey, um, any kind of topics that you guys want to talk about. Like we're here for you. So what do you guys want to, to learn about um, above and beyond what maybe your TVI is already talking about um, at home or at school? So we, we want to bring this information to you. So tell us what you want to learn about and we will um, we'll talk about it because it's Taco Tuesday, every second Tuesday of the month. So that's what we got so far. Does anybody want to share or did you have an aha moment tonight that you'd like to share us a, share about? Maybe a resource that you didn't ever think was, was there or available to your child that now you are going to access. Yeah, the, um, the pool, um, introduction to pool might be something that we can enjoy. And, and then also the library had, you know, when, she, when you started talking, I was like, oh, that won't relate to us. But then it's like, oh, actually, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, it does. It will. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Um, Janice says there I have a lot of websites to review. Thanks for all the information and some resources. Thank you, Janice. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of, of websites to explore. And the beautiful thing is all of these resources are free to you. And um, they're available no matter where you live in the state of Washington. I want, I want you to realize that and know that. Um, Krista, do you have any closing words that you want to share with us? Well, I, I, I put my phone number in the chat there. Um, please reach out and give me a call, text if you have a question just about anything in this, in this um, world that we're navigating. <laughs> um, and I can help you 
uh, get in, get you in touch with someone that you might um, be seeking to talk with um, uh, regarding um, information that you um, learned here tonight and and beyond. So please feel free to reach out to me, even just to chat. Sometimes it's it's not. I'm not going to lie. Not sometimes. It's always nice to to have conversations with others who have been you know who are going down the same road that you are um and we have a lot of we spend a lot of time in in the hospital and with specialists and therapists and um um it's it can be it is exciting as it is to see our children bloom and blossom and become um, the person that they are meant to be it can be overwhelming and so I've been there and um, Diet is just such a wonderful resource and, and thanks Diet for setting this up for these families and I look forward to next month um, and hopefully we'll have some some new people join us. Oh. I just lost oh. my screen. Did you freeze? No, <laughs> I, no. Um, oh. It's, you know, it's late and I'm sure that you guys want to get back to your children. So thank you so much for coming tonight and sharing a little bit of your story with us and with, with everybody. Um, again, I look forward to seeing you uh, next month. Email me um, at any time. Um, I know that you have a, an ongoing service provider already in your home. Um, I'm also on your team. I, I, I always like to say that you have a fan club of, of teachers and therapists, but, um, there's, I want to be a part of your fan club too. And so, um, always reach out to me with any, with anything. And I really look forward to seeing everybody in February. So have a great night and thanks for coming. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye, everyone. So good to see you.